Hey guys, welcome back to the study for this week, and we're looking at Philemon 8 through 16 today. For love's sake is what Paul will say here in the passage that we're looking at. So for love's sake, Paul's going to ask Philemon to do something. And uh, so first thing we see, it's an appeal, not a command. Now, so in verse 8, Paul says that he's bold enough to command Paul, or Paul says he's bold enough to uh, command Philemon to do something. Paul, being an apostle of Jesus made so by Jesus, had authority in the church to command the believers to do things. This was by virtue of the office he held, not by any other reason, not because um, they deserved anything or that they should follow him. And so it's not because of the fear of man or timidity on his part that he is choosing not to command. He's bold enough to command Philemon to do something. Um... But instead, he's rather going to appeal to love. He says, I appeal to Philemon. He's going to appeal to Philemon for love's sake, he says. Paul calls himself a prisoner for Christ Jesus instead of an apostle here. His office uh, would allow him to command him to do what he's about to tell him to do. But uh, So he can invoke that. If there's no sign of rebellion or sin, though, there really is no need for Paul to hammer him with the apostle uh, office. So he's not going to do that. He knows Philemon. He's sounds like he's acquainted with Philemon, knows who he is as a man, and is now willing to uh, leave it for love's sake instead of having to correct him. You know, he's not rebellious here, and so that's the difference. Um, so Paul's request is on behalf of a man, a man named Onesimus. Now, Onesimus should not be in Rome with Paul because, as verse sixteen says, he was Philemon's bondservant. Sometime before he, the writing of this letter, Onesimus had fled from Philemon's house. And uh, what was the punishment for being a runaway slave during that time? Well, it was crucifixion. Apparently, he was not a very good servant, as Paul says, that he was formally useless to you. In verse 18, Paul mentions Onesimus wronging or owing Philemon something. So we don't know exactly what Paul is alluding to, but needless to say, Onesimus was not working heartily as to the Lord. Actually, he couldn't do that. Why? Because he didn't know the Lord before that. So Philemon was probably a man with some wealth since he owned slaves. And at some point, Philemon met Paul and heard the gospel. Philemon came to faith in Christ along with the others in his house. However, Onesimus was not one of them. When Onesimus ran away, he was an unbeliever. But as the providence of God would have it, Onesimus met Paul. Um, he met Paul as well. And somehow this meeting occurred, we're not told. Some speculate that he uh, received an introduction uh, through Epaphras, who might have been previously acquainted with him. I mean, Colossae is a small town, and, you know, Epaphras seems like an, uh, a guy who people would know in town. But at any rate, Paul shared the gospel with Onesimus, and he became a child to Paul, and he became his father spiritually. Before Onesimus was useless, but he became useful, which is what his name actually means. Onesimus means useful. He became such a help to Paul and was so endeared to him that Paul writes that in sending Onesimus, he's sending his very heart. And so Onesimus was this great man of God now, and Paul enjoyed having him there. He was not useless, he was very useful. Um, he would have been happy to keep Onesimus with him and have him help him during his imprisonment. But Paul, knowing that Onesimus was still legally a bondservant to Philemon, did not want to do anything without his consent. Paul didn't want to force Philemon to be good to Onesimus, but wanted him to do so on his own accord. So he could have uh, forced his hand and said, you know, as an apostle, I am commanding you to release Onesimus to me. But he doesn't do that. He says he wants... Philemon to act on his own accord, so he wants him to be good. He's not going to force people, he's not going to force Philemon to be good. He's going to say, here, here's the truth, here's what's going on, now let love dictate how you act. So Paul's appeal to the providence of God is obvious. In verse 14 he says that perhaps the unbelieving Onesimus, the illegal act of running away and the disruption of Philemon's home occurred so that Philemon might have Onesimus back forever. 
Philemon was not just getting a servant back when Onesimus returns, but a beloved brother. Paul says a beloved brother, especially to him, but how much more to Philemon? What Onesimus and Philemon had intended, God had intended for good, that Onesimus might hear the gospel and be saved. And now Onesimus and Philemon are in heaven together, brothers for all eternity. And so God changed that whole situation there and their whole relationship between each other too. And we'll see how that plays out in the next part. And uh, we'll see what Paul uh, is going to keep encouraging Onesimus to do here.